her Alzheimer's are starting to uh, go get to the point where uh, she starting to lose motivation eating and it's not because she's not hungry she's distracted maybe she's not feeling quite comfortable enough maybe because her classmates have been at least the past few months encouraging her to eat like and, and we just found out maybe you know not too long ago that they've been doing that like the other the older people her. encourage her we caught the caretaker kind of hand feeding her again. Otherwise, you know, it, it takes longer for her to eat. But we didn't want her to do that because we don't want her to lose that ability to, you know, to feed herself. So uh, what we've been doing is that we noticed she's having a hard time scooping up food. So we would just help her scoop the food and then have her do it herself. They serve it on a plate. And then what we did was um, we told the occupational therapist at the school. At the school, what's going on with her, what we notice of. I also told her that what we did at home, we put her food in the bowl instead of a plate, and that'll be easier. So then she can carry the bowl and she could eat like this. The occupational therapist said that's a really good idea and she's going to tell the other teacher's aide to put food in the bowl for her instead. Yeah, just encourage her to eat. I think whenever she runs into like a roadblock when eating, if she's having difficulty to scooping up food, then she'll kind of give up, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or since it's a flat plate, that's why you know you, you told them to give them her a bowl, bowl, so that way she'll be more encouraged to like, oh, I can do this, you know? Yeah, she, she, because the bowl is easier than a plate when she right. lifts it up. And yeah, at home she eats with a bowl too. She doesn't eat with a plate. Uh, I mean, I guess that's maybe partly cultural too, because we're, you know, we're Asian. Uh, we do like eating things from a bowl more from just a flat plate, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's just anything just kind of help encourage her and not have her lose that ability to, to feed herself. I've been um, going to see her during my lunch time just to monitor her because she's been, you know, um, I noticed that she's not really eating. And also, um, I don't want her to be fed. You know, I want her to be more independent. That's why I took my lunch time just to go see her. While I do my work, I sit there and eat. And so I can have that break time just to go see her. And I sit there, you know, food was already there. And then uh, she would just like slowly eating. Sometimes she would miss the food and I would just scoop it out and put it in her spoon and then, you know, she'll eat. Salads, you know, you can't pick up salad from a spoon you have to use fork so i would have to change the spoon to a fork and she would hold the fork and i would tell her okay put put into the the salad and this is how you do it i have to teach her yeah i mean you, you really need someone to supervise her the entire almost the entire time while she's eating because switching utensils she she has difficulty doing that she'll end up just holding a fork and a spoon both hands and just kind of like staring into space and not knowing what to do like you literally need to have someone, okay, now you need to use a fork, you know, help her to put the spoon down, get the fork, put it in her hand. Since her disease has progressed, we've seen that fine motor deteriorate and her needs change and we've had to adapt along with it. I actually looked on the internet and found adaptive products that were really helpful. An edged plate that has a little lip on it so that if she goes to push food, the food is not going to come off the plate, it's going to stop at the edge. To keep that plate in place, the best secret found is you go out and buy shelf liner. Well, the same thing works with a plate, or if you don't like the looks of it, put a fancy placemat over it, but they won't go anywhere. They won't travel across the table. We also have worked out two different methodologies for those people with um, fine motor difficulty. They have, you know, out there available in the market utensils, both weighted and unweighted, with oversized grips. And they come in forks, knives, and spoons. But in the case of someone that finds them too large, obstructive, doesn't like the look of them, or has hand pain, what I did, and I did it with my father, I take just a small washcloth, I wrap it around the handle of the implement, the utensil, and then use painter's tape to kind of secure it. 
Um, I use the painter's tape because 90% of the time that washcloth is going to end up being soiled with food. So this way you just undo it, throw it away, take the washcloth, wash it, reuse it again. Then there's also a specialized mug for coffee um, that has a good handle on it. Then what I do is I label them. One is labeled milk, one is labeled water, one is labeled juice, the other is labeled coffee. That way she has an immediate identifier as to what she's going to be drinking. She can discern, at least at this point, what is hot, what is cold, even without seeing the liquid. So I think on the short term, we've kind of responded to the issues at hand and it still allows her her independence. Well, over time, uh, living here in the house with Mark, as he's been on his journey with Alzheimer's, I've learned that you have to have things in an uncluttered way and that he will only see them if they're in the place he expects them to be and in that orientation. He likes to have his two favorite cutting boards that he uses to make breakfast in the dish drainer. <laughs> One of the cutting boards has to be facing this way, like with the top facing you, and the other one has to be over here on the side. He has two different knives, one for cheese and one for his grapefruit, and they need to be kind of in the same place all the time. And it helps not to have any other knives in there, also drying, or any other dishes or silverware or anything in the dish drainer. It just needs to be that display in that order. I think this is some kind of hallmark of Alzheimer's that objects in space are not seen the same way that we see them. And his coffee cup, the greatest dad in the world, the only coffee cup he'll ever use, is kept in its own spot with his water glass. And for the cheese, which he needs to take with his medicine, he knows he can take the board and the knife to the table. He knows where his cheese is in the refrigerator. If the red covering isn't kept with it, he won't be able to see that either. And if anything is in front of it or on top of it, he won't see it. It has to be in a certain place in the drawer or he won't see it. He is very happy going around getting his little accoutrements and putting it on the breakfast table and sitting there and slicing his cheese while I give him his hot coffee. He enjoys his life and I just, I'm happy that he's enjoying his life.